All right, today we have the August 6th Finance Committee. A little blast from the past to give you a little recap of why the government actually paroled in the commons here. So, uh, this pretty gets a little bit heated and he's hard on these people. Check out this witness. While you were speaking. Uh, the, the second point I would have is this. Out of the top 100 the, the, charities... This, this will be the last question. Out of the, top 100 charities, out of the top 100 charities you have in Canada, can you explain why only five are in Quebec, only two serve Francophone populations, and while the other three are, are international facing, except for one local community organization, why are your records on Quebec activity so deplorably low? Uh, is it in part due to the fact that you have vacancies in your board and have and have staff members serving as board members in the point of order. and have no francophone point of order. Or Adam, is it simply uh, because you don't Mr. have Vaughan, access Mr. Vaughan, to Quebec? Hold on, we have a point of order, uh, Mr. Vaughn. Point of order, Mr. Julian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. This this is uh, really disgraceful behavior by the part of the member. He knows what's appropriate in the committee. And uh, one of the things that's appropriate is rather than berating witnesses, we ask, ask the questions. Uh, very inappropriate behavior, and I hope you uh, bring them to bear, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I've interrupted uh, Mr. Uh, Vani a couple of times, Mr. Like Mr. Julia, but I've seen uh, I've seen this uh, kind of questioning from all sides during this hearing process. I might admit, Mr. Vaughn, last question. Just the last question on on your yeah. inability to assess uh, charitable work. I'll give work you time to answer that, Ms. Bain, but we'll get the last question first. On Go your ahead. inability to 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 assess fairly uh, charitable activity in Quebec. Uh, the fact that you only have five out of one, the top 100 in Canada, only five are in Quebec, and only two are francophone serving. Would would you share my assessment of of of, of your work as as being incomplete in Quebec, and 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 in fact you have no capacity to assess um, Quebec charities because you actually don't assess Quebec charities. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Bain and Miss Thompson, uh, Miss Bain, Mr. Thompson, rather sorry, Miss Bain. Quebec is a very important part of Canada, and we have research reports on 80 of Quebec's largest charities. We work with donors in Quebec and private foundations in Quebec. And none and of them make the grant. Mr. Mr. Vaughan, uh, could uh, you allow uh, Ms. Bain to answer, please? There are definite cultural differences we are seeing where we look at Australian and British charities. Their annual reports have much more detailed information about a charity's operations compared to Canada. We also look across Canada and we see in Alberta much higher transparency. In Quebec, one of the largest issues we have is that many Quebec charities do not post on their website audited financial statements, despite receiving upwards of five to $10 million in donations. Our rating values highly financial transparency. 98% of Canadian donors expect charities to be financially transparent. Thank you. Find out that the two issues that you listed are not separate. The uh, awarding of this contribution, this half billion dollar contribution to the We Charity uh, is. Uh, a, uh, was by itself suspect to begin with, but now that we learn about the uh, strange labyrinth of we charity organizations and the peculiar way in which money circulates between uh, the, multi the multitude of entities, uh, it, it does raise, uh, it does uh, draw a line back to how the government chose this organization and whether or not appropriate due diligence about the recipient group, the program delivery body, uh, was done. Chair, so point of order. These are not uh, okay. these are not uh, separate there, uh, there's issues. There's a point of order on the floor, uh, Mr. Severa, but it, yeah. it isn't a point of order. But I'll I'll allow Mr. Polyev to finish. Well, it just it is a point of order, and I'll tell you why because mm -hmm. you were just telling us about the confines of our study, uh, which this committee adopted. And I'm simply pointing out that the questioning that we're, put, we're, we're forwarding to the witnesses today, the expert witnesses, uh, is entirely uh, within the mandate of this study. 
Uh, now, I know that uh, Mr. Cerbera is desperate to, to keep these questions unanswered, um, and I suspect he'll jump in again to try and and cover up uh, and slow the the, the now, study. Now, now we're but straying we're I, straying from uh, your point I, of order, Mr. Bolliev. Just, just point out that all of the questions that have been asked today are within the confines of the study, uh, as is the valuable information that Charity Intelligence is sharing. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I allowed uh, that round of questionings, but all I'm saying is uh, let's not uh, let's not stray uh, too far and away from the government connection to this charity. That's all I'm saying, Mr. Sabera, You had a point um, of order, Mr. Chair. I just uh, I wanted to express my doubt that Mr. Polyev's comments were actually a point of order. They sounded much like debate in his own personal views. And as for his comment about questions, there are a lot of questions that have been asked, and uh, let's continue to ask good questions. And yours and, uh, is not a and yours is not a point of order in my view uh, in my view either. Okay, Mr. Cumming, and then Mr. Fragan. Mr. Polyev, uh, and then Mr. Vaughn will wrap it up. Mr. Polyev, five minute round. Thank you very much uh, for your good work. First question is: uh, we we saw a testimony uh, regarding luxury uh, four thousand dollar per night. Um, uh, escapes for prospective uh, and previous donors uh, at uh, to we um, is this a how what percentage of charities would you say offer this uh, kind of uh, luxury and expensive travel to donors um, uh, as uh, as as we has apparently done uh, in revelations before this committee. I may be confused on that, but I believe that those trips were provided by me to we, the private business. Interesting. And all right, that's very interesting to know. Um, regarding the contribution agreement, the Kielbergers claimed they had there was no way they could make any money. Yet the agreement specifically allows the We Charity Foundation to subcontract to a series of other organizations, including the Me to We for-profit enterprise. Um, do you believe that it would have there's anything in the contribution agreement that would have prevented monies from flowing through the, the We Charity Foundation to a list of uh, or other organizations that would be subcontracted and ultimately therefore benefit the Kielbergers? Well, the, I mean, the, the agreement specifically laid out the possibility of money flowing to other WE organizations. Uh, but I mean, I want to I want to clarify. I mean, the Kielberger said that there was going to be no financial benefit to uh, WE charity, which is true. I mean, it is a charitable organization, uh, and so there was going to be no you know, financial. They were not going to make a profit on on this because that, that's not a that's not part of the charitable sector. Uh, but what it would allow is for uh, them to maintain their staff, potentially grow their staff, maintain uh, maintain the charity at its at its current levels, if not uh, if not grow it. So I mean, there was a there was certainly a social benefit to to having this contract, um, but uh, but you know, clearly there was no you know there's no such thing as a financial financial profit for a charity. Well, of course, and I think the the word profit is being used as a red herring here, of course, um, you don't have to make a profit to make money. Uh, in fact, we, we all know uh, people who have businesses that don't have any profit, but they personally do well, either by subcontracting to themselves, covering their expenses, or paying themselves salary, all of which is deducted from a would-be profit. Uh, and all of that would have been allowed by this contribution agreement. So the use of the word profit is a complete red herring. It tells us nothing about the ability of the Kielbergers or their related organizations to benefit from uh, the contribution agreement. Um, how many staff hours would uh, we uh, would would um, the Charity Intelligence Group have spent to uh, produce uh, its let's say its uh, the the research it has published on We Charity in the last year? So, can you repeat the question. How many hours would the charity intelligence group have spent uh, um, on research that produced the re uh, the the publications you've done on so, We Charity in the last year? So just to do the update 
on uh, July um, 6th or whatever the date was, July 2020. Um, it, it would have been about two days, so maybe 16 hours. But since then, and with all the media and before then, um, it has been pretty much uh, a lot. Of, right. A lot of the last week, a lot of the last month. Sorry, to clarify, I just mean prior to, um, let's say prior to uh, June of this year, um, what, what would you, how much, how many hours would uh, charity intelligence have spent uh, researching information that you published on we uh, in this calendar year? On the on the research report, it wouldn't be much, maybe a day or two. Greg, the, the big work was on the impact analyst side. How many hours another, do you think the analysts spent? Yeah, and probably another additional two days on the on the impact assessment. So and that what, what was the publication uh, date on that? Uh, that was uh, back in I believe September of 2019. Okay. L last question, Pierre. Go ahead. Well, it's just extraordinary that in you know three or four days of work. Uh, with three or four employees total, you were able to produce all of this information when the Prime Minister's own department, um, the Privy Council office, uh, was not, uh, which has that, that literally has a thousand employees, was not able to, to produce the same information uh, in a two week period during which the Prime Minister himself, the head of government, had uh, supposedly asked for due diligence and scrutiny to occur. Uh, due diligence and scrutiny being words he used in his own testimony. Uh, question final. Uh, on apprend aujourd'hui. Last question. Today we learn. Today we learn that uh, we had asked for nationals' help, the national corporation, for their help to implement the program. This shows that we was not able to do things itself. According to your research on WE's activities, have you ever seen other examples where WE would have managed a program with 40,000 volunteers and grants or subsidies or salaries to thank these same volunteers. Did we ever manage a program of such a scope that was proposed here in the contribution agreement between we and the government of Canada? Uh, Ms. Uh, Behan? I, 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 um... I, I hadn't seen, I, I, no, I mean, I'm just giving you context. The Fort McMurray uh, fires, Canadian Red Cross deployed about 2,800 volunteers for that. So that would have been people in their network. The, the size of 40,000 volunteers, um, and, and maybe that's a better question for Volunteer Canada because they would have better context of that number. Okay, uh, Mr. But, uh, Mr. But, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. if I could just uh, clarify, I, I, I just want to see if you, was there any evidence in your research of this organization that it had in the past uh, deployed 40,000 youth volunteers and coordinated them um, in, uh, and re uh, compensated uh, them with honorarium? A, a, a quick answer, uh, Ms. Spain. And we, no. we were looking at the WE days, we were looking at the WE school program, um, so not a service volunteer program like this. Okay, uh, Mr. Bond, last, uh, last round, five minutes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, just a, a quick question on, on um, members of the, the opposition have said that you provide valuable information, you do good work, some would call it excellent work, it's impressive analysis that you provide. Uh, I've got a question for you. What, what do Habitat for Humanity, uh, Oxfam, the YWCA, the YMCA and the Canadian Hearing Society all have in common? They are all organizations. It would be similar to um, what does a law- You rated laws, them though, did you? Uh, what does a law laws or a Royal Bank- No, I asked a question. What do they have in common based on your ratings? Uh, we'll give uh, Ms. Uh, Bain time to answer. 
They are organizations out fundraising for Canadians who are trying to make a decision about which charity can they donate to, to, you know, and, and that's it. So at the okay. end of the day, a donor has a hundred dollars. Fair enough. That's, 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 a, that's a fair answer. But are, are you aware they also have scored lower than we Canada on virtually every one of your charts? And therefore, based on what the opposition is saying, Habitat for Humanity, YWCA, both in Vancouver and Toronto, uh, Oxfam, the Canadian Hearing Society, all are more of a risk to, 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 to donate to than we charities based on the research that the, that the opposition has declared as valuable, excellent and impressive. I would say that, the, that with we charity, um, our ratings measure objective metrics, which don't capture accurately our concerns about its government, uh, about its governance. And also there were unique characteristics with the flow of donations to for-profit private businesses. Okay, um, so let me ask you another you, question then. Just, uh, uh, Mr. Vaughn, just uh, let uh, Ms. Uh, Bain uh, complete her answer. Yes, that's fine, sir. Okay. The pop